Welcome to Euro PCR 2025. My name is Robert Byrne from Dublin, Ireland, and I'm delighted to be joined uh, by my friend and colleague Bruno Scheller from Hamburg Saar in Germany, and we're looking forward to uh, discussing drug-coated balloon angioplasty today. Bruno, welcome. It's a great pleasure to be with you, and I'm looking forward to our discussion about DCB today. Great. Um, I mean, one of the first things, Bruno, would be interesting to hear your insights in as one of the uh, pioneers of this uh, technology is, where do we stand now in 2025? So almost 20 years after the initial clinical experience was published, uh, you know, when and uh, how should we be using uh, drug-coated balloon angioplasty in daily practice? So the, the most important thing we learned over the years is that uh, it's not about uh, delivering a truck with DCB, it's about lesion preparation. That's, that's, that's the main um, uh, message. The initial indication, instant restenosis, is not a really good indication. Uh, what's more interesting is uh, to treat de novo diseases, um, but this is only possible with, with more experience in, in preparation of the lesion, uh, and that's, that's very exciting and it's very important to say that it's not a uh, decision against the stent because we will stand, we need stents uh, in many cases but DCB is a tool to reduce the number and length of stents in the patients we treat. I, I, I is, do not know your opinion on this but I think it's, it's very similar. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something that resonates uh, well with me. I don't uh, think, as if we talk about de novo disease, uh, I don't necessarily see drug-coated balloon angioplasty and drug eluting stent stenting as uh, competitive technologies, rather uh, complementary, uh, diffuse disease, uh, small vessel disease, uh, sometimes bifurcations. These are areas that we tend uh, to use drug-coated balloon angioplasty in. Uh, I know there are other colleagues who are more enthusiastic uh, adopters who then use it across the range of uh, de novo vessel indications. Um, but you alluded to lesion preparation, and this is something when people are switching to drug-coated balloon angioplasty for the first time uh, in de novo disease uh, that they are confronted with. Uh, what comprises an adequate lesion preparation if you're going with a DCB strategy? It, this depends on the complexity of, of your lesion. Um, so if you have more soft lesions, it makes sense to, to start with semi-compliant balloons and going to, to scoring balloons, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, but what we see more and more is a huge amount of calcification in our daily practice and uh, in this situation you have to use all the, the fantastic tools we have meanwhile for uh, modification of, of your, your calcium and, and that's, that's very important. What's also more and more interesting is the role of intravascular imaging in, in this situation. Uh, we have to learn that there will always be dissections the question is if, if these are uh, flow limiting or potentially flow limiting dissections um, or not. And that, that's the new way to go and, and where we have to yeah. also create new data to support this decision making. Yes, and we're starting to see some randomized controlled trial data coming out now looking at uh, intravascular imaging guided versus angiography uh, guided DCB angioplasty. But in your daily practice, you someone to say, listen, usually I'll get a good idea if this is an acceptable result angiographically um, and then proceed to drug-coated balloon angioplasty or are you frequently relying on intravascular imaging to say, here, I've done a good job and I can get by without stenting, I'm going to go to DCB. So in, in simple lesions, I think it's, it's okay to, to work angiography based uh, and using the old dissection classification, looking how good the flow is, what is the lumen. Uh, you have to uh, check in at least two um, uh, angles every time to, to have a, a good assessment yeah. of, of the result. But as soon as you get to more complex disease, it makes a lot of sense uh, to guide your intervention by intravascular imaging. That's one of the lessons we learned in the le okay. last years. Yeah, and that's a message that fits well with what we're generally doing in coronary intervention in uh, recent yeah. years. What about in, in terms of uh, dissections? I mean, you've mentioned dissections already. There's an old adage, don't expect a stent-like uh, result. Is that something that's still the case now in 2025? In general, yes, but uh, we learned that we can be more aggressive, especially in, in adequate sizing. So a one-to-one -one sizing is, is important. And we know that dissections are the mechanism of angioplasty. And we also know, meanwhile, that 
uh, dissections improve your drug transfer to the vessel wall. So we have to learn to accept that they are there, but you should not uh, cross over to stenting only due to the fact that there's a dissection. At the end of the day, the physiology uh, and the flow is, is what, what uh, is the, the most important thing. Okay, so the tools that we're used to in day-to-day -day clinical practice uh, serve us well also for drug-coated balloon angioplasty and meticulous attention to detail, I suppose, being uh, particularly important with a stent-free approach. Yep. As we look then to the future, I mean, these are exciting times, I think, for drug-coated balloon angioplasty. Uh, sure, in de novo disease, we've had a steady trickle of trials uh, over the last uh, 10 to 15 years. Uh, last year then we had a large trial, rec uh, cage free one, was, which was probably the largest trial we have in de novo disease. But what's uh, coming in the, uh, on the horizon for uh, data with uh, drug coated balloon angioplasty? I mean, the good news is that uh, uh, many large randomized trials with clinical endpoints are all going on and uh, many more are in the planning for the next years. And that's the most important thing, creating clinical evidence uh, for different patient populations, for different uh, clinical scenarios and, and anatomic scenarios. And that's what's coming on and this, this is really exciting to see uh, this technology coming out of the niche, for instance, restenosis, which it was, um, now to uh, more broader application with the required uh, clinical evidence. Yeah, so I think exciting uh, times then. Um, we've learned, uh, as we said already, that drug-coated balloon angioplasty and drug eluting stenting are probably um, uh, complementary technologies rather than competitive technologies. You've reiterated the importance of effective lesion uh, preparation, perhaps a little bit more aggressive than we used to be in uh, lesion preparation. And then you've uh, drawn our attention to the fact that there is much movement in this space at the moment. It's a dynamic area and we look forward to more and more randomized control trial uh, data so that we can incorporate this technology in our practice against a better evidence base. So Bruno, thanks very much for uh, joining us today. Thanks to all of you who've joined in uh, to watch uh, this uh, broadcast and we look forward to seeing you again next time.